Luke chapter 5. Luke chapter 5. I feel the anointing. Well, I, I, I sense. I you can feel the anointing. I sense the anointing very strong on me right now. I could literally start praying for you. Because both of my legs is charged. Just like when your cell phone is charged. <laughs> That's why I want to keep singing, but hey, I don't want to. There's a word. There's a word. It's the word that's going to help you. Luke chapter 5, verse 1 to 5. So it was as the multitude pressed about him to hear the word of God. They pressed to hear what? Come on, say, they pressed to hear what? The multitude pressed to hear the word of God. That he stood by the lake of Genesari and saw two boats standing by the lake. But the fishermen had gone from them and were washing their nets. They were washing what? They were washing their nets. Then he got into one of the boats, which was Simon's, and asked him to put out little from the land. And he sat down and taught the multitude from the boat. When he had stopped speaking, he said to Simon, Launch out into the deep and let down your net for a catch. But Simon answered and said to him, Master, we have toiled all night and caught nothing. Nevertheless, at your word, I will let down the net. Father, bless this word. Speak and do not let me speak in Jesus' name. And God's people say, Amen. Amen. 15 minutes. 20 the most. I'll try. I'll try. Please give the musician water, please. please. If, if I had a bed back there, I would put you guys on AC to sleep on the bed. I did great. Amen. Watch this. Luke chapter 4. Luke chapter 4. John chapter 1. John chapter 1. Chapter 2. Chapter 2. Luke chapter 4. Luke chapter 4. Chapter 5. Chapter 5. Jesus was announced. Jesus was announced. By John the Baptist. By John the Baptist. By telling the truth. Jesus was announced. John announced his coming. John said, somebody who's coming is greater than I am. And he will baptize you in the Holy Ghost and fire. While John was preaching, here come Jesus. He approaches. John did not know it was Jesus. But what they told John, whom do you see? The Holy Spirit comes upon. He is the Savior of the world. Now, I mean, I have a message on this. The whole time John was preaching, he did not have the Holy Spirit. In the Old Testament, they never had the Holy Spirit. It was left. So the whole time John was preaching about Christ, he didn't have the Holy Spirit. So it's only through the Holy Spirit you can recognize the Son of God. That's what happened to Peter. When Jesus said, who do you say that I am? They did not know. Until the Spirit of God comes upon him, he said, you are the Messiah. Then Jesus says, flesh and blood did not reveal this to you, but my Father heaven. So the whole time John did not know Jesus until the Spirit come upon Jesus. And the only way he knew because they told him the sign of the Holy Spirit. So that's when Jesus could have been filled with the Spirit. John would have never known until he see that sign. So John saw him, baptized him, heaven open, the Son who I'm pleased, Jesus was led in the wilderness. When he got in the wilderness for 40 days, for 40 nights, the Bible said he was fighting against wild beasts. That don't mean that Jesus was fighting against lions. Maybe a little cockroach or bed bugs or a scorpion probably was trying to attack him. But really, what Jesus was wrestling with, he was wrestling with the flesh. Every man that entered this world, you have to go through a covenant. That is why every man was born of a man. But Jesus was born of the Spirit. So when he was, when he got born, he had to be led in the desert to tame the flesh, to control the flesh. Taming the flesh means. Am I talking too fast? You sure? So taming the flesh means that he had to fight his own demons. What was the demon of Jesus? It was power. Was food. We all have our own demons. 
Watch what happened. Regardez when he came out of the wilderness, what happened? Tempted three times. Fois. Power, Puissance, money, food. Manger. All that was available to him, but he already wrestled against it and win the victory. So when he came out of the wilderness, he passed the test. When he passed the test, the first thing he said, repent for the kingdom of God is at hand. The word repentance here is not judgment. The word repentance here is not condemnation. The word repentance means grace has come. All you got to do, turn around, no matter what's going on, Come to me, you will be saved. Are you getting what I'm saying? So while he was preaching, Luke chapter 4, he entered the synagogue. They asked him to read Isaiah. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me to set the captives free, open up the blind eyes, and bring the Lord his favor. After he read the scripture, he said, today, this scripture has been fulfilled. They tried to kill him. He walked among them, disappeared, they could not touch him. Then he continued to walk, Luke chapter 5, while he was walking, and he saw two boats, and a lake, and by then, a multitude was following him. So the Bible said, he got into the boat and asked the owner of the boat, which was Simon. He says, go a little further because I don't want them people to walk on me. And then he got on the boat and he began to preach the word. That whatever you hear, he's preaching the word. He's telling them the truth of the kingdom. Anyone that came before him didn't preach the word. They prophesied the coming of the word. They did not preach. That is why Jeremiah was able to condemn and judge. That is why Isaiah was able to call fire from heaven. That is why Moses was able to release the plague. Because there was no word that was preaching. Oh, you guys, you missed it, you missed it. If there was no word that was preaching, that means there was no offering of life. Of course, Isaiah is going to condemn. Of course, uh, 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 Jeremiah is going to condemn. Of course, the prophet is going to judge. Because they don't have life to give to you. The fact that they can't give you life, when you do something to them, they call fire from heaven. So the Bible, when the Bible says Jesus was preaching the word, that means he's giving to us what Isaiah or the prophets could never give to us. He's giving us the truth of the kingdom. He's telling us what Moses gave us in code. He exposed us in revelation. What, uh, what uh, uh, um, um, the prophets of, of uh, uh, um, Elisha or Elijah what they could not understand he exposed it he said this is what they were talking about if you receive me you will be received life many times in those scriptures what do you say he says David Moses Abraham Isaac Jacob all of them he said what you read they talk about me so when Jesus was on the boat, he's giving them the message of life. That's why the people was drawn to it. Because they never heard the word like that. They never heard the man say, if you receive the word that I give to you, you receive life. They never, said, they never heard the man say, I am the way, the truth, and the life. You got to remember these people, they've been waiting for a Messiah. A Messiah means someone who is confident in himself that he knows God he knows he came from God that he knows he is God and when he's talking he's not talking as a man that have no authority he's talking as a man that have power so when Jesus come and begin to preach the word he was telling them I know the father and the father knows me what you've been waiting for is right in front of you all you got to do is believe what I say that is why the scripture say 
faith come by hearing and only hearing of the word of God. What does that mean? You cannot unlock nothing if there's no word. You cannot unlock your gift if there's no word. You cannot unlock your potentials if there's no word. You cannot unlock your destiny if there's no word. The Bible said this book of the law, you shall meditate on it day and night because it will give you life. See, when you experience the word of God, something begins to happen. Let me open your eyes. Churches are frustrated right now because they're not preaching the word of God. They're preaching the emotions. They think they are Elijah. They think they are Elisha. They think they are Moses. I told God, I don't want to be Elijah. I don't want to be Elisha. I don't want to be Moses. I want to preach the gospel of Jesus Christ because in the gospel there is life. If you believe, say hallelujah. Did you put the compressor on my mic? I want to preach. Are you listening to me here? I feel something in the house. I'm telling you, I feel something. I was walking, I was walking yesterday. I came from, you know, in today, came from service yesterday. I realized my spirit was there. Why, why am I feeling so good? I'm, I'm feeling comfortable. I'm feeling good. I prayed for over 10 people yesterday. I, I feel good. And I said, Holy Spirit, what is going on here? He said, you see, since you start preaching the kingdom, no strength come out of your body. You see, when people preach their emotions, they get tired. When they preach about kill your enemies, they get tired. See, the kingdom of God is not about killing your enemies. He said, you prepare a table for me in front of my enemies. Ah, my cup begin to run over. I come to tell somebody the gospel is about to be preached. And you will see a remnant rise. A remnant who doesn't care what people say. Who doesn't care what people do. Who don't care about no Facebook, no IG, no Twitter. Where they know you talk who care about advertising the kingdom of God. If it is you, say, Lord, here I am. <laughs> Take the compressor off my mic. They never heard this type of message before. Listen, in reality, the gospel is really is too good to be true. It really is too good to be true. The way it comes at you, is it really that easy for me to be saved? Whosoever, whosoever call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Believe in your heart, confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord, that you be. Is it that easy? Yes, it is. So they never heard that before. Let me, I, 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 the whole time they had chief priests, high priests, frustrating them, asking them for offering every year. That they had to find lamb, they had to find goat, they had to find a pigeon, they had to come in the temple, they had to make a, 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 a offer blood for the sins of the family. It was a frustration of sin. It was a frustration. So when Jesus began to preach the word, the multitude was captured. Not only the multitude was captured, Peter, Simon Peter, he was captured. Simon believed so much. Jesus looked at him. He says, let's go a little further. Because Simon believed. You, you didn't get what I said. When Jesus got in the boat, he didn't pay attention to Simon. He paid attention to the multitude. He just got in the boat to preach the multitude. But while he was preaching, Simon fell into the message. Simon's heart was captured. And he said, Simon, take me a little further. Throw your net over here. Simon said, we fight and toil all night. We haven't catch nothing. We are cleaning our nets to go home. 
When Simon said that, I said, Simon, do you realize what you are saying? It's like I was there. But I wasn't, but it's like I was there. <laughs> I said, do you realize what you say? You say you've been toiling all night in the first place. Why are you trying to catch fish at night? Some of you, that is your problem. You are trying to catch fish at night. You still don't get what I say. The scripture says we must work as long as it is daytime because night is coming. Night means is the darkness is covering your problem, your issues, and your sins. In another word, Simon was trying to prosper while his sins, while his life was covered by the darkness. His secrets was not exposed. He was was bound by the issues of his life. There's no way he could catch fish. There's no way he could catch anything. And the thing that Simon was doing, he was washing his net in the daytime with some type of water. Can I talk to somebody here today? I said, can I talk to somebody? Whatever water he was washing his net with, will never clean it. Okay, let me explain what I'm saying. The net Simon was using, it would represent his gift. The boat represents his life. The night time represents the kingdom of darkness. Simon was working for darkness. His gift was functioning for the world. It was not functioning for the kingdom of God. That is why somebody in the world can be a millionaire and billionaire, but they don't know when they're going to die. They don't know how they're going to die. At any time, the enemy can take them away. There is a, a, a show that just came out on Netflix. Um, the Fall of the House of Usher. It's about a millionaire who sold his soul to a witch. And the witch came for payment. for payment. The contract was when it comes to time you're about to die, all your kids is going to die with you. If, this is, if, if they could make a, a show with it, that's when it's real. I always tell people, wait, me, I'm a Christian. I'm so Christian. I will not watch but stuff like that. You won't watch them, they will watch you. I, before Jesus was arrested, he, he says, says watch. That's mean if the show comes out, watch the show and pray. Find out what's going on. Witches can enter your service and you can enter the service. What is that? Me, I will enter the service too. Are you listening Let's to me here? So Simon was working for the kingdom of darkness. He's been using his gift to catch fish. Catching fish means trying to survive. Trying to live his destiny. Trying to live his future. Trying to be who he's supposed to be. Every time he threw the net, he cannot catch nothing. The Bible said the whole night he tried, but no fish come to the net. So the scripture said, when Jesus got in the boat, realized Jesus did not say Simon throw it the first thing he did he preached the word of God because whatever Simon was cleaning his net with he was not going to clean the net but when he began to preach the word the word began to clean his life Simon realized who he was how do I know when they catch the fish Simon went on his knees he said I'm a sinner stay away from me Jesus said after today do not listen to me here John 15 say you are clean because of the word that I speak to you. You don't need to go shower. The word that I speak to you already clean your life. Are you listening to me here? When you talk of the word, your life can never be the same. Some of you, your gift.
gift is not working the way it's supposed to because you don't know the word of God. Let me open your eyes. There are many people out there who's trying to be famous, who's trying to use Facebook, who's trying to use media. The only reason they can't make it because they are trying to use their gift, not because of the kingdom of God. Hold on, hold on. Listen to me. Listen to me. Listen to me here. I almost forgot this. God told me something the other day. You ever seen preachers? They are trying to do demonstration of power. Right, right. They say, you know, just let me make you sleep. Am I telling the truth here? Come on now, if you know what I'm talking about, say you know what I'm talking about. Let me make, let me make you sleep, sleep. Let me make the baby jump. I used to do it too. Do you know? There is nowhere in the Bible. Any of the disciples. Was doing demonstration on purpose. The demonstration they did. When the Bible said. Peter was walking. And the shadow fell on the sick. It, it was not a demonstration he was doing. They knew he was coming that way. And they put the people on the road. Because there was too many sick people. It was not Peter's shadow that healed the people. Peter don't know how they got healed. It was the faith of the people. That the people said, if his shadow hit me, I know the anointing is on there is no way the Bible said they call somebody. Let me do demonstration of power. No. While they were preaching the word, and Paul saw a man that was crippled, and Paul said, I see faith in you. Rise up and walk. The reason some people cannot prosper now is because they try to use the gift of God for their own bellies. They want to get their account fat. They want to make money. They want to make popular. They want to be the real boss and the real prophet. You cannot be a boss and a prophet at the same time. It's either you are a servant of God. A sweet and bitter water cannot come out of the same mouth. You gotta pick a side. I wish I was talking to somebody in this place. You gotta pick a side. You gotta choose where you need to be. That is why some people, they take the shortcut. When the Lord was calling me, when the Lord was calling me, I'll never forget. It. 2007. It was around August. September, August. Just fresh receiving the Holy Ghost. No, when you just got the Holy Spirit, you are pumped up. You are hyped up. Like, you, know, you, you just want. Like, like, I will call my friends. You, you, you hear that, huh? Uh, you know, you just fresh. You know, you just want to do things. I pray so much. Things begin to happen to me. Never forget it. I went by the ocean. I was praying. I prayed for one hour. And I sat down. I fall asleep. When I fall asleep, in the vision, a woman came out of the water. The bottom was a fish. The top was a woman. And she said to me, if I kneel down to worship her, she will make me a millionaire. I saw a suitcase of money pop up out of the water. I looked at her. I say, my covenant is not with you. My covenant is with God. When I said that, another suitcase pop up. She said, I will make you a billionaire. Right now, I would have been a billionaire. I said, her, I don't need no money from you. My covenant is with God. And I came out of the vision. When I came out of the vision, an angel suspended in the air spoke three things to me. And it's those three things that I do today. He said there are three things that must happen in the service. First, the word of God preached. Second, the anointing manifests. Third, the glory invade. The glory, the, the word brings faith. The anointing deals with your problem. The glory God takes over. Are you hearing me? 
after I hit the revelation, fire popped up inside of me. The same night, while I was asleep, a man came to me. When he came to me, he showed me. He said, I will take out one of your canine. You know, the long one. You know, they don't know. Long now, right? He said, I will take it out. When I take it out, I will put it under your skin. In your right and your left hand, every night, you will grow wings. You will be able to fly anywhere you want. I looked at him. I say my covenant is with God. I don't need anything from you. I woke up. I went to pray. That day I prayed about five, six hours. Non stop. The next day, another man came to me. When he came to me, he had a book in his hand and he was flipping the pages. I saw every nation of the world in the book. He said, if you kneel down, you do whatever I tell you to do, I'll give you the whole world. I looked at him. I said, I don't need nothing from you. My covenant is with God. After the third dream, my mind was confused. Because I'm asking what is going on. What is happening here? I pray for seven days. When I say I pray for seven days, that's mean if I used to pray for one hour, the seven days I pray more than one hour. On the seventh day, while I was laying down, the roof of my house was removed. Literally, there was no roof. Like somebody took the roof and take it out. A light came from heaven. And in the light, I saw a small bottle of oil. Inside of the bottles, it was written house, money, cars, prosperity, whatever, like, name it, all of them. And then it was shining on me. And the voice of the Lord said, because you passed the test, I will give all these things to you. And I woke up. Listen to me. When I woke up, Satan came to me. He said, you passed the test. But I will make you go to hell before you can get this thing. See, the shortcut is there. It's just some people refuse to take the long road. The pain, the suffering is part of the journey. Someone who don't have a scar on your body, you are not a Christian. If you don't have a black eye, you are not a Christian. If nobody slap you, you are not a Christian. No one spit on your face, you are not a Christian. They have not assassinated your name, you are not a Christian. They have not tried to bury you alive, you are not a Christian. If they have not deserted you, you are not a Christian. If they have not, ah, uh, you not listen to me. It's when you go to the trials, David says, yeah, I walk to the shadow of the valley of death. I shall fear no evil for you are with me. You see, we must go to the valley of death. We must get slapped. We must get hit. Paul said, we've been crucified. We've been disgraced. We've been shamed. But we do it all for the glory of the Lord. Tap somebody next to you. Say, Jesus is looking for you. Oh, I'm preaching tonight. I'm, I'm preaching. <laughs> I'm preaching tonight. I've been teaching for so long, I, for, I forgot how to preach. Hey. The shortcut is always there. Simon was working for the kingdom of darkness the whole time. Him and his brother. Until Jesus began to preach the word. And when he was preaching the word, Simon was captured. Simon said, what manner of word is this? Uh, we, we heard the, the, the high priest, the, the, we heard the law, we, we heard but what he's talking about here. This is what we're looking for. Do you realize, the same Simon, he was uneducated. He didn't know how to write. He didn't know how to read. Now someone who don't know how to write or read, they have an aggressive nature. That's mean they're very aggressive. They have anger issues. You not listen to me. They have anger problem. That's mean they're ready to fight. That's why he cut that many ears. You still don't
y'all get what I'm saying here? Some people said you are not qualified because you have a personality issues. You have a character issues. You have something wrong with you. That you are not qualified. You're not a gentleman. You are not a lady. I'm trying to tell somebody something here. Don't listen to them. Jesus is looking for your aggressiveness because the kingdom of God suffer violent and those that are violent will take it by force. I'm trying to help somebody understand here. Don't let nobody calm you down. Keep your Oh, I feel something in the heart. I said, I feel. Let me hear the lion. I told everybody in the ministry, if you was a gangster, don't lose your gangster way. One day I'll need you. One, one day I need you if you was a black belt if I have to open a place for you for you to keep practicing I will open up for you to keep one day I'm gonna need you because me I don't have no black belt I wasn't a gangster I'm a preacher so when somebody attack me I need your phone number I need I need a Peter I need a Peter come oh, are you not listening That's why sometimes people say ça fait des fois, people dit, in this ministry mon they're so aggressive. Oh, aggressive. Thank you for your aggressiveness. Merci parce it aggressive. protected me. It protected me. It protected me. I'm too soft in heart. I'm too lovable. I'm too, I'm too gentle. I'm too patient. I, I, I love your aggressiveness. Somebody say hallelujah. <laughs> Peter was captured. Let me finish. My time is done. Peter was captured, right? And when Peter was captured, and Peter captured Jesus realized. Let me tell you something about the word of God. The word of God stopped even when one person captured faith. He don't wait for the crowd. He wait for one person to believe and begin to move. See, while Jesus was preaching, he realized Peter is ready. He looked at Peter and said, take me further. Because now I have to show you the power that I'm talking about. Paul said, when I come to you, I did not come with philosophy of the world, but I come in demonstration of the spirit power. In another word, if I said God can heal you, God is going to heal you. If I said God can deliver you, God is going to deliver you. If I said God is going to provide for you, I feel like preaching in this place. God going to provide for you. I come to tell somebody what is going on tonight. He realized faith was in Peter. So he turned to Peter. He said, take me further. Peter said, hey, all night. Right. But Peter believed. That's why I say Peter believed. Peter said, at your word. Did you hear that? He said, me, it's for me. There's no way that's going to happen. But at your word, I heard everything you just said. Why would Peter say at your word? He never met Jesus before. He never heard Jesus before. He never been in the service of Jesus before. Jesus just started to preach. But he said at your word, because whatever he was preaching, he believed. And he says, throw it here, Peter. When Peter threw it, he was waiting. They waited. They looked at Jesus. They waited. And while they was waiting, the Bible said, fishes come. Fill up the net. It was so filled up. The net began to break. They had to push, pull, and all the fishes in the boat. Peter realized, the man that just talked to me is not just any man. This is the Messiah himself. 
We know him as Jesus. They know him as Yeshua. He said, this is Yeshua himself. Peter put his knees down. He said, Lord, I'm a sinner. Stay away from me. He says, from today, you won't fish for fish no more. You will be fishers of men. Listen to me. There is no way Peter could catch if Jesus did not get in the boat. I said it earlier. The boat of Peter represent the life of Peter. If you have a dream, you saw you in a boat, the boat represent your life. If you have a dream, you drive in a car, the car represent your life. If you have a dream, you see you in an airplane, the airplane represent your life. If you had a dream, you drive in a bus, the bus represent your life. Do you see that? If you had a dream, you see you own, your, you own a house, the house represent your life. Do you see what I'm saying? The same way that boat represent the life of Peter. All the fish that he caught, in Acts chapter 2 Acts chapter 3 he stood up the Holy Ghost came upon him and he opened up his mouth and began to preach the word the Bible said 3,000 people came to the Lord that day with Jesus he caught 3,000 fishes there was 3,000 fish on the, in the net Jesus, give him a prophetic word. From today, you will not catch fish. You will fish for men. In Acts chapter 3, he fished for men and he caught them. There is no other way your gift can function. Your talent cannot come out until you encounter with Jesus. How do you encounter with Jesus? The Bible said, I will not leave you as orphans, but I will send the counselor, the comforter. When he comes, he will remind you of all truth. That everything that I said to you, he will remind you. And he says, Luke chapter, Acts chapter 1 verse 8, you shall receive power when the Holy Ghost comes upon you. In 1 Corinthians chapter 12, the gift of the Spirit, Romans chapter I mean, Galatians chapter 5, the fruit of the Spirit. How do I encounter Jesus? Is when I allow the Holy Spirit to do what He wants to do in my life. The more the Spirit works in me, for He such a heart and cry with bones and groans that cannot be expressed, interceding for us. The more I allow and submit to the Spirit, the more heaven will open, the more my gift will come out, the more my talent will come out, the more I will be used by God, using my God. God doesn't mean I have a mic. Using my mic, my God doesn't mean I'm singing. Using my God doesn't mean I'm praying. You could be a millionaire. You could be a business person. It could be your marriage. It could be your family. It could be something, your education, your career. When you allow him, he will open up your gift and you will begin to prosper. That is why I come tonight. I tell somebody, when you receive the anointing, what are you going to do with it? Where is your career? When you receive the anointing, what you gonna do with it? Where is your life? When you receive the anointing, what are you gonna do with it? Where is your marriage? When you receive the anointing, what you gonna do with it? Where is your ministry? When you receive the anointing, what you gonna do with it? Where is your prayer life? Because the Bible said He anoint us for a special reason. And tonight, if you know that reason, the power of God gonna flow in your life. You gonna see breakthrough. You gonna see elevation. You're gonna be seeing see doors open. What was hold in your life will be released. What was delayed will come back up. If you believe, lift your say, Lord, I believe. The message is: message la say. You have the net. You're just not catching. You can blame not catching on education. education. Now that I'm saying education is not good. It is good. But don't blame not catching on education. I cannot be fully myself until he who made me fully in me. Are you listening to what I'm saying? Now, this is the problem some of us have. And I used to have it. Being with Jesus is not a religious status. It is a liberty status. When I have Christ, I don't feel I'm in captivity. I feel I'm free. 
Oh, come on now, come on now. I'm, I'm, I'm talking to somebody here. That's when I feel I'm free. That's when, wherever I get, I may not have a thousand people talking to me. I know I'm free. I may not have a lot of friends. I know I'm free. I may not have a lot of connections. I know I'm free. But what's happening now is my freedom that attract the connections, that attract the business people. There are people with money They don't have the peace you have So when they see you And they encounter your peace Automatically they want to connect with you That is how God blesses you He don't bless you Because you, are, you have education He bless you because you found him you know how to do Psalm 91 verse 1. I have entered the secret place and the bottom and the shadow of the Most High. In another word, when everybody is trouble, you in the secret place. When everybody going through something, you enter the secret place. Now, the solution is every time you enter the secret place, you come out different. Amen. I'm, I'm, I'm not boasting. But if I boast, I boast in the Lord. And I heard it today. I heard it in my ears. I don't talk, I don't talk like that. But I heard it. I find out. There is no flaw. There is no flaw. In my prayer life. What does that mean? What does that mean? No matter what I'm going through, if you let me pray, you will see solution. Amen. There is no flaw. My mind can go upside down. But the moment I enter the secret place and I begin to pray, I come out with solution. If I was crying before, when I come out, I'm, I'm laughing. There is no flaw. What does that mean? You have to pray and pray until prayer becomes your life. You have to pray until prayer becomes part of you. You have to pray until that you shake the kingdom of darkness. You have to pray that whenever you enter to pray, angels come to you. They say, I'm ready at your word. I'm ready to move. I'm ready. Ah, oh, wish somebody was listening to me. Somebody tonight, God is about to increase. See, prayer is a, it's an anointed service, but that message, if you can get it, you will see. Prayer is not, it's not praying long hours. The most effective prayer is when you sit you say nothing that's the most effective prayer do you, do you know you don't need to work your mind for your mind to work oh you, you miss what I say all you have just sit down and watch the movie and you will figure out what's wrong you will figure out what happened you will figure out where the problem is you will see it that means there's no flaw most people when they go pray God give me a house give me a job since 2011 I have not asked God for a house I have not asked for money I have not asked for car I have not asked for nothing all I kept doing show me your glory you see some of you when you go pray oh father oh father when I go pray I pray in the Holy Ghost I will pray for, in the Holy Ghost for two hours three hours until I hear something how would you know what to pray if he didn't tell you what to pray he told Solomon ask for wisdom and knowledge it was not Solomon who asked he came in a dream. He said, ask for wisdom and knowledge. When Solomon woke up the next day, he killed a bunch of lambs. Give me wisdom and knowledge. You don't ask him. You wait for him to tell you. The only time I will ask God something, if I'm praying for somebody, I said, reveal to me, tell me what's going on. I don't know what's going on. And for my life, I wait for him to tell me. There's no flaw. I, I find out prayer is so exciting. 
Il va m'exciter. When you think prayer is boring, it's the most excited thing you could ever do. That is the reason Satan doesn't want you to pray. Because you know if you pray, you will encounter God in a level that will change your life. Lately, it's been happening to me. It's been happening for at least three to four months now. If somebody about to call me and I'm sleeping, while I'm asleep, I saw your phone call. And then when I woke up, I saw your missed call. Somebody was going to say something to me. They was going to say something to me. Oh, let, me no, let me let me give this one. There was there's a man of God I know. I will not say name. Hey, hey far be it from me. I will not say name. A man of God I know. Man of God. No, if he is, where is God? But he used to do witchcraft. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Oui. So I disconnected myself. Oui, déconnecté tête, oui. Before I disconnected Avant myself, my father was oui. alive. Ma femme était vivant, toujours. My father came to one of the one of service and he told Papa me he had a, he had a dream. In the dream, he saw the man of God poop on the floor. And I came, I picked up the poop. Years after the dream, my whole life turned upside down. That was witchcraft. My whole life turned up because I didn't take heed of the word. I was only 23, 22, so I didn't listen. About two years ago, while I was asleep, I'm sleeping. While I was asleep, I saw that man of God. He was walking somewhere. He pooped on the floor. When he pooped on the floor and I'm looking at the poop, and I jump out of sleep. When I jump out of sleep, who called me three times? That man of God. Three times. I panic. I, I pick up my, my phone. I call my brother. I say, yo. This is what just happened. What am I supposed to do? I said, this is this is I said, I'm not gonna go through this again. I said I will not walk through that through that trial again. No, I will not go through that. And the Holy Spirit told me calm down. He said, calm down, don't worry about it. He said, nothing's gonna happen. To you. I call back. When I call back, listen, anyone that do you wrong, don't be afraid to talk to them. If you scared to talk to them, they will win over you. Fear will creep on you and they will mess your life. They will destroy you over and over. It means that they have power over your life. So I pick up the phone I call. What I did is I opened my ears. I listened to every syllable, every letter, every word that he said so I can make sure what I heard. The Bible says, if God is before you, who can be against you? See, when you encounter this God, you don't fight for your gift to come out. It comes out. It comes out. It comes out. Listen, I'm, I'm about to finish it. Musician, you can come. Listen to me. The point I'm trying to make is, Peter, was gifted the whole time. But he can never use the Mais gift until that droit. encounter. That encounter changes life. Can you imagine the man that was not educated? He was the one that was the leader of the disciples. Tonight, I don't know what your gift is. I don't know what, what you are looking to do. I don't need to know. But one thing I know. I remember years ago. It was a service like this. 500 people. I was sitting in the back. I was so hungry for God. I was, I was hungry. I was literally hungry. I'll do anything. 
And I sat down in the service, Et 500 people. Dans un service, là, deep monde. worship was going on. While the worship was going on, I was not asleep, people. My eyes was open. And I saw a man running down the aisles, jumping, dancing. I mean, he was just running and dancing. I'm looking at the thing like I'm looking at it. Then I heard a voice say to me, follow him. Whatever he's doing, do it too. I said, no. I said, there's, there's 500 people here. I'm not going to let nobody laugh at me. I said, no, I'm not going. He says, follow him. I said, no. No. He said a third time, follow him. I said, no. And I put my head down. All I know, I found myself on the floor. It's after service. Um, somebody who knew me in there. And he came to me. He said, I saw you was jumping in the Holy Ghost. I said, was I really? Because I don't know what happened. Because I blacked out. All I know, I saw me on the floor. And while I was on the floor, this is what I heard. He said, the man that you saw running, that was David. And I saw two feet was standing next to me with a white robe. And he pointed at me. He said, I'm going to give you an anointing. The anointing that I'm going to give to you, nobody has it. You work for it, you deserve it. I will give it to you. And he walked away from me. The man that was talking to me, it was Jesus. And I understand that day, sometimes, God will make you to do crazy things. The Bible said the foolish things of God confound the wise. He will make you do something so stupid and everybody laughing at you. But when you come out of that experience, you receive something nobody saw. He begin to use you in a way nobody understands. Tonight, what I'm telling you is your gift is already there. It's not me that's going to do anything. I'm only a vessel to release release the glory here, to release the anointing, to release that power. Even when we was doing the worship, I felt the surge of his glory on my feet, like electricity. And the Lord told me, I'm ready to release them out. I had a vision before I came here. I saw all your honor, all your over, all everybody heads over here. And the Lord said, I'm going to open up your spirits and I'm going to release your potentials. Some of you, after this service, if you couldn't make money, you're going to make money. I said, you're going to make money. If you couldn't buy your house, you're going to buy your house. You couldn't get married, you're going to get married. Ah, if something was wrong in your family, you're going to get fixed. When that anointing comes, when that glory comes on your life, that glory is going to change your life. The glory of God is the perfection of God. When you receive that glory, the perfection of God will enter you. I feel something in this house. Some of you, you've been waiting for too long. Dry seasons been overpowered you. Dry season been overtaking you. But I'm here to tell you that dry season is over. If you believe, you will see the glory of God. If you believe, the doors of God will open for you. And he will pour out. He'll pour out oil. He'll pour out living water. He'll pour out. Watch it. Bring out for Bring out for Bring out for That's the glory moving already. He'll pour out the anointed. The power of God will touch you. If you was tormented, he will set you free. If you was sick, he will heal you. He was, you need a miracle, you will receive your miracle. Whatever that you need, God is about to break you out. He's about to break you free. I prophesy now that your time has come. If you can believe tonight, something is about to happen. I wake up your spirit. I wake up the power. I wake up the glory that's on the inside of you. Let there be a stir. A stir, a stir out of your belly shall flow rivers of living water. Out of your belly shall flow the living water of God. Let the Holy Ghost begin to have his way. If you come here and you are hungry, you come here, you are bring them out, bring them out. You are hungry. God is about to touch you. Holy Ghost, do it again. Holy Ghost, touch them now. Holy Ghost, those that are hungry for more, those that need more. More. Those that need you, those that need you, touch them, touch them, touch them, touch them, touch them, touch them, touch them.